Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TV show podcast, which I accidentally named that and didn't realize how genius it was until after the fact. <laughs> Somebody asked me that. TV show podcast. Um, this show is kind of morphing into something new. I generally talk about parenting um, and what my vision was to have fathers come on and share their stories. But as I'm growing older and my kids are aging, the truth is that I love a lot of things and not just parenting. And I share and I taught them a lot of things as it relates to marketing, leadership, uh, skills development, personal development, that all those things to me are skills that we need as better human beings, but as better parents, better partners. Um, so I don't want to limit myself to just talking about parenting and just have conversations, have general conversations about what I'm thinking about with you guys, but also with people that I love and admire, um, like my friend here, Sue, Susan Anderson. Is that what you have right Anderson. now? Okay. I just want to make sure I got that right. That's it. Um, Susan <laughs> Anderson, she is a longtime friend. She actually was there at the general beginning when I first quit my job. Something that I do a lot, that I'm asked a lot, is like, why did you quit your job? Why did you quit your job? And I tell that story. I think everyone should know it by now. <laughs> but she was there. She actually interviewed me. So over the course of that time, we've become grizzled veterans. And uh, we've come a long way. Our friendship has grown. <clears throat> and we have stayed in touch. So we're going to talk about, I don't know what we're going to talk about, to be honest. I do have a couple of questions as it relates to what she's doing right now because she's, does, she's doing some fantastic things. Um, and I'm going to get to hear more details about it today with, you, with all of you. So having said all that, Susan, how are you doing, my friend? I am so excited to be here, man. I'm, I just had flashbacks to interviewing you. I remember I was sitting in my, I had you know, little kids at home. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in our little SUV at a parking lot trying to have quiet because, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and just being so blown away, like, oh my gosh, this guy actually did the thing. He's like, oh, he's like on the brink of quitting his job. He yes. created this, you know, info marketing world. It was kind of like a real one, a real person really did it. <laughs> That's true. And it was so nervous to hear one of the very first interviews I've ever done. Was I really? I've interviewed hundreds of people. Yes. Oh, that's I was so scared. And you were so nice. I was like, oh, all right. This was fun. <laughs> that I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> and you actually... So you <laughs> Take it all back. <laughs> right. Um, you actually interviewed us right as we... Uh, Brad and I, by the way, Brad, Brad uh, Costanzo, uh, was my former business partner. And our first attempt at uh, doing an info product, which now is basically just a course. It's a, what was the, the infancy of what course creators used to do, what creator, course creators do now. Um, so we started getting a mild bit of success and Kevin Wilkie of Nitro Marketing at the time uh, contracted you to interview me. And I still didn't think we were successful, but apparently we were successful enough and we were, we were making money. Um, and yeah. it was before I quit. That's right. I thought it was after I quit. It was before, like, dude, that's a, that's, yeah. a, that's going way way back. Yeah, way back. I mean, your kids were tiny, and Mine so were yours. Little, yours are tiny. You're so <laughs> yours. That's the fascinating thing to to witness all our old. kids growing old. <laughs> that to me is crazy. They are definitely getting old. <laughs> How old are yours now? 25 about to turn 26 and 22 yeah oh, 22 23 oh crap <laughs> like, <laughs> no i'm like it can't be it can't be yes <laughs> say it ain't so the gray hair girl would. just got married that i saw <laughs> and it got me really emotional i'm not gonna lie i'm like i've been watching him grow up you know, you didn't share a whole lot like I do, but you shared enough to feel like I had a connection with him. I knew his mother. Yeah. Uh, and to know that oh, you were yeah. married is like, yeah. time is ticking. Mine <sighs> are now 20 and 18. Well, officially Insane. 20 and 18 this year. So within the next few months, that will each be 20 and 18. Uh, the young woman's going to be go off to college. Uh, and we did the thing. We did it, right? Like, we did the thing. 
we yeah. you, you we said it, it earlier you did the we thing did we did the thing of raising these children raising these kids into yes. self-sustaining individuals i guess uh, i don't know right? <laughs> <laughs> almost At, adulty adults <laughs> right my my oldest said dude this adulting thing sucks <laughs> it's a trap <laughs> she's out living on her own has a full-time job i'm like oh man I told her early on for years, I said, uh, when they were younger, I, I had these conversations with them. I'm like, don't to be in a hurry to be an adult. It's overrated. Yes. I promise you, you're going to have 60, 70 years of being an adult later. Enjoy being a kid. Yeah. Please. Exactly. And I remember you saying that. Okay. Maybe I have to tell you. Like, okay. So many of the things, even though your kids are younger than mine. But I learned so much watching you mm -hmm. be a dad and watching how you talk to your girls and watching like, you know, you didn't have them all the time. I didn't. And the way that you made that time count and matter and the girls that you you built and equipped to face this world, you prepared them. Like, I, I still get chills and tear. Like, <laughs> you get tear right now. <laughs> Don't make me cry. Right? You're, 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 you're the one talking. <laughs> Just watching <laughs> <laughs> You're the one laying this out for me. You're painting the picture. Right. You did this, man. And it was just, it was so, it, it just, it touched me. It touched me like for ways that, you know, like every kid grows up and they wish that they'd heard certain messages yes. or whatever. So it, it like touched me. You know, not saying because you're certainly not older enough to be my dad. Right. <laughs> you're no. my younger brother, day. For sure. You know? But, like seeing that, like it, it touched me and it touched the way that I parented. Wow. And I just want to thank you because I've been enjoying and just raptly watching as you parent your daughters. Thank you. Thank you for those All words. I, I do remember uh, a couple of times having conversations over the years. We don't talk a lot, but when we talk, it's always really rich and um, yeah. full of, full of detail, full of uh, uh, connection and emotion. I remember, uh, one time you reached out to me after I must have writ, writ, written something. Wow, what happened there? <laughs> I must have wrote something. Um, and you reached out to me and thanked me. Um, even as, as the daughter of a father, right? <clears throat> and it actually happens a lot where, where daughters reach out to me, older women, who wish they had a father like that or, or wanting to do better when they become parents. Um, yeah. And there was a point in time when I really struggled with sharing this stuff like I, I really reserved it and, and didn't share near as much i've only gotten more comfortable later and i remember you were one of the voices i always had in my head they said no keep sharing don't be ashamed don't don't worry about people like there are people that appreciate it and i've always to this day i have you in my head keep sharing like we oh. we your audience appreciate yeah. it yeah oh definitely definitely wow. i mean you will never know the full impact that you've had you know think about that there are people who've read, who've been forwarded, who've listened to your <laughs> podcast, who've met you in passing, all this kind of stuff. And they're still, wow. they're still impacted by this. They may not even remember your name, but and this that, still made a huge impact. Wow. Okay. Whew. This is, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting shivers, uh, goosebumps. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, only in the last couple of years since COVID, I really started to make a, even a bigger commitment. Um, and this podcast is a reflection of that to really push harder at sharing whatever the heck stories are still in my head while I can remember them. <laughs> Lessons. My girlfriend's always in, <laughs> my girlfriend's encouraging me to, to write a book, and it's kind of in the works. That's the reason for yes. the writing. Um, because there were, there were strategies. There was, there was, it was really specific. It was really uh, strategic in my approach. I was strategic in my approach um, because I wanted to make sure it stuck. Um, and I knew we could do better. We could do better. So. Sure. Um, sure. I wanted to ask you. I can't wait. I'm gonna, I want your first copy. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm going to go through, so on that end, I'm going to go through some of the, the essays that I'm writing. I'm trying to make the essays about a topic a lesson, uh, a mind frame, mental frame. Um, yes. and, and I'm packing, I'll share this with you right now. This is, I keep, I'm working now, working this idea out and I actually posted a little about it yesterday asking this question. What is the purpose of emotions? All right. Cause if you, 
the reason I ask that is emotions are a result of something that happened, right? Um, mm -hmm. Something happened, and because we're emotion-feeling machines, we felt something, and then we behaved as in a certain way because of it. So the emotions are kind of like a, a way to tell us that this thing is good, bad, or otherwise. So mm -hmm. I always made it a point to try to teach my girls emotional intelligence, to be aware of their emotions, make them comfortable. It's okay to cry. It's okay to scream. It's okay to be mad. All those things are part of the human experience. Um, but emotions themselves, and this is the bigger thing, but emotions are big, <laughs> they're huge. But uh, the other thing, and you can help me with this, is emotion, the way we feel about a lot, almost everything is a result of the expectation, the difference between expectation and reality. Okay. So yeah. if you're on your way, to, and this is what I've been able to kind of start penciling out, if you're on your way to a... Uh, have a meeting today, for example, and you, you look at it and it's going to be 30 minutes. Google says it's going to be 30 minutes, but you get there in 20. What emotion do you feel? Right? Yeah, I won. I beat the boys. <laughs> <laughs> but if it takes 45 minutes or an hour because something happened, something you weren't anticipating, now what's that emotion? Yeah, then you're frustrated, angry, and what the heck? miserable yeah so on the yeah. flip side of that I, I find that I have concluded and this is a theory I'm I don't know social scientist or anything that our emotions are a consistent result of an expectation not being met or being exceeded in a relationship mm -hmm. you, you expect your partner to be loyal to show up on time to uh, maybe make dinner to clean the dishes and on the flip side of that is like well did your partner know that he was supposed to clean the dishes? Was there an agreement in place? Uh, you know, so it's this constant measurement. Our, our minds are, I think, are constantly creating this. There's like an algorithm. It's constantly doing that. So how, how do we feel about that? How do we feel about that? How do we feel about that? What was the expectation? What was the reality? Was it, um, and in a good relationship, your expectations and your realities are kind of uh, stack on each other well. And if they don't, you're able to have a good conversation around like, I expected you to do this, and you did that. The other person's like, well, hell, you never told me that, right? <laughs> or, I never signed up for that. Or, oh, babe, I'm sorry. I can do that. So that's one of the things that I'm really working through, like this big like philosophy that. and maybe a template for the book itself. Um, because I feel yeah. that if you do that well, sometimes it's like, yo, that's unrealistic. I can't make it in five minutes because it takes... It's, I don't know, 60 miles away. Like, dude, that's unrealistic. Or this human being can't give me these, uh, these, um, this emotion reciprocity because he's not equipped for that. He's been through some trauma, right? right? So anyways, what do you think? Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. It's funny because I've heard, um, so often I've heard, you know, that we are emotion, we are meaning making machines. Mm -hmm. So that something happens, you know, we have a feeling about it and we decide like this means X, Y, Z. something. Mm -hmm. um, but I love this because it's, you know, it, this covers both. Uh, so like, uh, let's say, all right, you, you think, all right, you know, why he didn't do the dishes. Ah, you know. Great. When it becomes a meaning filled thing. Now it's like all the impact of that expectation differential yeah. is way heavier. Yes. So it's like, it's excellent or it's really bad. Yeah. You know? And it's like, and we make it mean something about us, you know, and something about like, you don't love me, you know, our safety, our well being. Right. And it has nothing sometimes. It's just a fact. Like, <laughs> dude didn't do the dishes or hey, it took 50 minutes instead of 40, you know, and it's, but I love that you've got the expectation thing. So yes. for me, I think that was like a little missing piece. That's, that's like a, a preventable. Thing, yeah, so you, know? you take it a step or, back. A you take it a step mm. back and like, okay, yes, the thing happened. And yes, I had that feeling, but yeah. why did I have that feeling? Well, I yeah. I was under I assumed you were going to do the dishes after I uh, made the meal. Really? Oh, well, you always really? do the dishes. Yeah, but today I did the meal. So I assumed I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so, and I we've been practicing I've been practicing this with my girlfriend actively because sometimes I'm like, all right, something's off what expectation did you have of me in this moment did i did i do something yes. that you were expecting me to do 
or or like if, if you get to that faster now we can engage in it and i'm convinced that if you love each other enough that there's a true bond and connection you can work that out now, if oh, you already yeah. hate each other, then yeah. like you're no, you're screwed. You're <laughs> <laughs> there's bigger the cool things. So check this. Okay, check this. This will add a little another little layer. This is just it. so amazing. Uh, I was talking with a friend of mine, Melissa, and she said that um, intimacy is born through successful conflict resolution. Mm. So it's mm. the same thing. It's like makeup sex. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like you know, like. You have a thing, right? And you, you like face it together and you deal with it. You you walk through it rather than shoving no. it to the side. I'm not going to deal with this. No. You know, any of that kind of stuff. If you actually deal with it, you end up closer. You make a great point. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm like, like so I love like I'm just picking the, the like this is amazing because we're like now we've got that piece of expectation and that gives a great conversation starter. Like, wait a second. I think maybe we yes. have skewed expectations here and, you know, how, how can we work through this better? It makes it so that you can do mm-hmm. better the next time and communicate mm-hmm. better the next time. And then, you know, assuming that you have this uh, somewhat healthy way of actually mm-hmm. talking through it rather than violent treatment or yeah. just. Ah, you know? <laughs> so it can actually end up being a really good it can, thing. Because now you're little by little because we come into the relationship as very different people. And there's something that connects us, whether mm-hmm. it's lust or uh, similar likes and uh, or passions. Uh, so yeah. the more we kind of start to come in line with each other, because you're going to disagree or, or, or find conflict. That I wanted to get back to the point that you said about how conflict can bring you closer. And I think it's something about the magical moment when you're like, oh, I see. I didn't tell you that. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. And it's like, oh my God, I love you. Make out with me. Like there has to be some <laughs> moment of magical, uh, like energy spark that, that that reengages in that moment. Yes. Like, oh, that's dope. Oh yeah. I, I want to illustrate that. Yeah. Isn't Whoosh. It? And then contrast that with like, what, what would it be like to be in a relationship where there never was conflict? That'd be weird, right? I mean, I, I was. I just like, read. Are they being truthful? No. Are they really here? Are they, you know, like what's happening here? How is this happening? Like, am I with a, a bot? <laughs> like, what's going on? Per- exactly. I was. I started reading this book. And I forgot the name of it. It's on conflict, uh, on arguing, how to argue better and debate better, disagree better. I'm trying to really, like, wrap my mind around all these wh- these concepts and also understand them at a deeper level from people that have done more research. Mm-hmm. But he says that couples or anybody that says they don't argue, then they're, they're not being honest. They're not being like there's going to be some disagreement it could just be about what time to wake up in the morning (laughs) i'm going to wake up seven i'm going to wake up at eight turn your damn alarm off it could be simple stuff um (laughs) yeah it's it's um it's fascinating and and knowing and this is the thing i talk to the girls about often knowing how to argue um is essential which is comes back to this i think now knowing that it's usually a conflict of expectations and realities Getting to the yeah. the crux of the argument that you both are having can help you resolve that better, um, because you're gonna yeah. argue, especially if you plan on being in that relationship for an extended period of time. Like, if it's not a yeah. one night stand or just a short term, like if there's true love there, right? You're gonna have to figure that yeah. out. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely, and that's the way that it becomes sustainable, and mm. and the way that it can keep growing. You know. If it were, if you were with somebody that agreed literally with everything you ever thought, said, and did, like I know I'm full of shit sometimes. Yeah, I'm like you're lying because I, I don't, I know I don't believe that to be true either. Uh, yeah, for sure. Exactly, it hurts both people if they won't admit that you know they they have feelings and thoughts and ideas about things, and if you're under the impression that they tell you like, oh no, everything's perfect, you're just perfect. <laughs> I you start wondering, are you really here? How did I get a robot here? for a partner? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how did I look out with a robot? We want to be seen, you know? Yes. It's like we want to be seen and then loved. Mm. Not just loved. Correct. Because then if you're just loved and they don't see you or you suspect they don't really see you, then how secure is that feeling? It's like, okay, clearly they've mm. only seen me on my best day somehow. Or, <laughs> yeah, they're not actually being honest and sharing the flaws. Like, hey, babe, I see this thing you're doing. You're avoiding this conversation with your father, with your mother, with your brother. Like, I am. (laughs) 
Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, and that in that way we make each other better, you know. Yeah. That is the That's idea, right? The best thing humans can do for each other. There's a. I wrote an article, an essay a while back about uh, my partners. All my partners upgraded after me. Yes, I saw that one. <laughs> And I believe that to be true, like 100%. They all found an upgrade. Sure. They found someone that was closer to what they envisioned because I clearly was not that person, right? Either I couldn't or I wouldn't and vice versa. Sure. Um, yeah. Though when you're able to find someone, like I believe my partner and my girlfriend at the moment, who is fantastic. She might be listening right now. You hear that, babe? You're fantastic. <laughs> Um, awesome. Gorgeous. She, yes, right? Wonderful. She upgraded me. I upgraded with her because she, I have never felt this seen, heard, loved. Um, our arguments are usually tame because we are able to talk it out. Um, but I never have seen, yeah. been, been this seen or heard. Um, yeah. And it, it, it feels fantastic. And I don't feel no reservation around saying that my ex is upgraded. They found people that truly oh, sure. wanted to give them what they desired and good for them. Like our right. paths just crossed. It was a better fit. Yeah. And I think yeah. too many better times. Better fit for everybody. And, mm. and you grow after as well. So it's like they upgraded and then you grew as well. So it's like, not that you necessarily would have become like, oh, now I'm this great fit, mm -mm. but just the better version of you. Yes. You know? It's a, uh, so I think yeah. one of the, the faulty things that I try to be honest with the girls is, you're, you're going to date many people probably until you find one that's a good match. Or you might get lucky because they're both actually in relationships with young men that are pretty fantastic. I've had a chance to meet them. That's amazing. I didn't beat them up. That's so good. I don't believe Were they in terrified? Them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, they should be. <laughs> yes. Um, but they genuinely are good human beings, good young men. Um, they're young, yeah. but they're open to yeah. communication, open to me talking to them. Uh, and That's good. I'm like, I actually have told both of them, like, you're actually supposed to have a jerk or on your first attempt. <laughs> Come like, on, I want to hate a guy. Right? Yeah, I'm like, I want to be able to say, no, not this asshole. Uh, what are you thinking? I am. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And it isn't. It's so it's 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 a really interesting, yeah. um, and we'll see how that plays out. But I, I, I truly believe they're going to be with these kids, these young men. I think kids are men uh, for for a right while, now, and right. it's like these kids now. Right. <laughs> I did want to yeah. talk about um, one thing that I got from you many years ago, Susan, uh, okay. that you made me keenly aware of. So we can start transitioning a little mm. bit. It's still about life, right? Which is writing. You're a writer, mm. right? Uh, yep. That was your uh, chief skill, core skill, right? Writing. And yep. I've always, from the moment I met you and I really started to get to know you because I didn't know that writer, I had never met a writer, much less one that made a living with it. <laughs> <laughs> so Weird. before I go into that, yeah, tell, tell us about the writing. Do you still do it? Do your, your company still write and yeah. do that kind of thing? Um, oh yeah, yeah, right. Thomas. Yeah, so um, in 2005, I started a business called Triumph Communications. Um, I had gotten to the point where I was like, I had gone to school forever, did not have anything that I wanted to do. Mm. I really wanted to be home with my kids. <sighs> and I just saw no way. And also, you know, at the time I was married to a pastor, we were broke Oof. and I needed to make money so that we could eat. <laughs> like, we like to eat sometimes. Food you know? is good. Food is good. <laughs> and so I'd, I'd hired a coach and kind of identified, you know, what do I do when I be up, when I grow up, you know? And she's like, well, you know, with the internet. There's like, this thing called the internet coming around. <laughs> Right, <laughs> this wow. crazy thing. 2005. And you could be a writer. And at first I was like, a writer? I don't want to be starving to death. The whole point is to make some money, right? <laughs> you know, like, like, well, on the internet, you know, it's not like writing books and hoping that some agent's going to pick mm. it up and send it to a publisher and all that kind of thing, and you're going to be on Oprah. Because that's probably not happening. But every website that comes out, every business is going to need a website. Mm. I remember her saying that, and I was like, 
Really? Who was this? Who was this? <laughs> Every was... website is complete word. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I started it and um, it quickly got really busy and I was too busy. I felt like, you know, that panicked feeling if you're a service provider of, mm. okay, I need to get new clients, a steady stream <laughs> of clients. But also i got to be able to fulfill yep how am i going to do both like this is it feels like driving with your foot on the gas and the brake at the same mm. time god that's a great like, metaphor oh, i don't want to grow too much i can't do it you know right, right so i started hiring other writers and bringing them in as contractors and training them like hey here's how i'm doing it let's do it like this right. and i've had some that have been with me like since 08. <laughs> still <amazing. laughs> yes there's way still to go here. wow yeah, it's amazing Amazing. And for them, like they didn't want to do the marketing and handling the clients and doing the billing and paying the, you know, yep. so they were really happy to have this arrangement where I just deliver, here's some work. <laughs> they write the work. I pay them. It's great. <laughs> Show up, punch in, punch out. <laughs> yeah. So it's wonderful for them and, mm -hmm. and for me, and it has made it that we've been able to serve, you know, thousands of clients over so, the years, that's so neat. Um, which is really cool. And then along the way too, they got really good at it. Like my project manager and head writer, she, I hope she buys the place because it's like, she's fantastic. She is like elbow deep in everything. Mm. And so I basically do a little interfa interfacing with clients. I do the billing, you know, I pay the writers, but she's running it basically. Mm -hmm. I got to the point where I was just kind of tired of writing for the same types of things. And I, I just, I'm like so hungry to learn things. And I got very into like, what is internet marketing? What is e-com? What is real estate? What is all, you know? Yeah. And so as I would get these different desires to learn things, almost always there would end up being like a major client who would say, Hey, can I put you on W2? Mm. And we worked together for a while. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> we got some rules, but yes. <laughs> so, so currently what I have is um, I'm the editor at uh, capitalism.com. Oh, wow. You're still there. So director of real director. Yeah. Still there. Yeah. And so that's serving like e-com right. people. They're learning how to build an e-com business that reaches seven figures in about a year, which is really, really cool. So I interview them. I write the newsletter. We've got like, a, you know, a lot of like 45,000 subscribers and about f almost 45% open rate, which I'm excited. That's, so, that's really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know, right? I'm like, this is awesome. So I love that. And I've been creating courses for them and, you know, I do some emails, that kind of stuff. Um, wow. And that's been really, really cool. Like I've met, I've worked with some incredible, like big names, small mm -hmm. names, but just very incredible entrepreneurs over the years. And I've learned from all of them. So it's, it's really been fun. That's gotta be, yeah. it's gotta be a great gig in that you get to interview people that are really, really pushing. Uh, and yeah. they probably have strong whys and they have strong vision. So the stories have to be really yes. amazing, rich, right? Uh, Super it's like the writing does itself. Yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> no, I, was, I was waiting to see if you were gonna check me on that. Actually, I was like, <laughs> it doesn't write. Yeah, I mean, occasionally I'll have a project that writes itself, mm -hmm. but you know, not, not usually. <laughs> so, but it, yeah, wow. it's been fantastic. Well, that's how I met yeah. you, right? You interviewed me. So yeah. in a sense, uh, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah, I, 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 I'm glad I was Thank able you. to yeah. not ruin it for you and like be a terrible interview. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this crap sucks. Well, Who are these great, people? At the time, though, TV, at the time when I interviewed you, I was shaking because I mm. was such an introvert. That I was like, how am I going to talk to somebody, a human on the phone? Are you kidding <laughs> me? This is crazy. Oh. Does this. <laughs> but it was so it was so easy that you know like eventually i stopped shaking mm. you know i was able to take notes all that kind of stuff and it just like i was able to look at that and going i actually like interviewing people i went through a period of years that probably only stopped about last year where i would every time i had an interview scheduled i was still like hoping mm. please cancel oh wow <laughs> And I was like, but I need to talk to them. But right. boy, I don't, I'm scared, you know? And now I'm like, I finally have gotten over that. I'm just like, whatever, you know, you love it. Shut up. <laughs> just That's interesting. I talked to my girlfriend a lot about that. Um, I think we just had a, a specific conversation around even the experts shake, even the experts are nervous. Oh yeah. I think I've read numerous stories oh, yeah. of like where 
musicians. I don't necessarily Prince necessarily, but someone that type of caliber that have has been documented yeah. that they throw up before every concert, uh, and it kind of right. almost never goes away. There's a, a like even so to be honest, even leading up to this interview, I was. I was hyperventilating a little bit <laughs> and you're a close friend and we're just having a conversation. Right. Um, I totally get it. Though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like this fight or flight thing. Yeah. It just like, hits you and you're like, I'm going to die if I do an interview. Really? <laughs> no, you're not. not. Shut up. Show up. Sit down. Have the, have the conversation. Um, I'm glad you continued. I love hearing it. And I watch it. Uh, so sometimes I don't know what's going on on Facebook because I have the news feed shut off. Uh, so I have no yes. news feed. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Um, even though I'm on there almost yeah. at least four or five hours a day doing client work. So I have not seen right. a lot of your yeah. stuff. But yet at the same time, I've seen enough to know that you're doing some amazing things. And I've always been impressed. The writing, the reason I brought that up as well, not just because it is your, your one of your big gigs, one of the things you do. Um, and we're going to talk about one of the big, big things she's doing in a little bit. I can't wait to talk about it because I want to hear more details. Um, much like your coach, who was your coach at that time that said that to you? This was a woman named Robin Powers. Yeah, I don't know her. I was curious. And I found her name. through, um, no, I don't think you would. I, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Laurel Langmire had mm -hmm. a had a book, The Millionaire Maker, mm -hmm. and I got that and I was like, hmm. and at the end of the book, it was like, hey, you know, if you want to talk to a coach, and I'm like, yeah, I totally want to talk to a coach. So interesting. Well, <laughs> I scrounged all the money I had oh, in the world yeah. and got a coach. <laughs> Good for you. Good for us. I get to meet you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that right there, that was 2005. So anybody that now it's quite obvious. Yeah, you need words. Somebody needs to be writing this stuff. Right. Um, yes. And I, I remember noticing that and realizing she's a writer. She's writing for blogs, for articles, for who knows, for emails. And everything on the Internet, not everything, virtually everything is written. And, and if it isn't, it should be. There should be a portion of it that is because Google yeah. crawls that. It needs words to actually index, yeah. right, to, uh, to be able to be found. Yeah. And it's one of the things I've always tried to encourage the girls to do is to write. Um, in fact, I, I'm convinced that my youngest, especially, the, the older one's more of a visual artist, more of the photographer, designer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Exactly. Oh, man, her stuff is good. It's getting better every time, too. So she's oh, only 19. Amazing. Yes, yes, yes. The younger one, amazing. she is prolific and amazing with the written word. Uh, She's about to go off to college and whatnot. Like one of the things that's going to really uh, allow her to get some stuff and get admitted into a lot of places is her writing. They love her writing, that's and I'm so good. I'm so excited. That's she, so great. <laughs> worst case scenario, and I've told her like no matter what happens, even in, when you're in school, I think we can get her a job. We can, she'll have a gig writing for someone. Like her sister yeah. works for a marketing oh, agency. Definitely. Yeah, she's already saying, hey, I think I can get you a job. We need writers. <laughs> Love it. So, and you, she can work from That's anywhere. So great. But I've always yeah. tried to encourage both of them. They're both good writers. The, the old one's convinced she's not that good. I'm like, you're, you're stupid. Mm -hmm. I love you, but you're stupid. You've been taking Probably better workshops. better than 90% out there. <laughs> she actually is. She used to do the poetry thing. She's taken workshops. She's, mm -hmm. I've given her uh, privates. Uh, she has a rich, uh, vivid memory and, and, and stories to tell, mm -hmm. but she prefers the visual, and that's fine. But you, you taught me that. You, you made that impact on my life, and you, you probably don't even know it. This might be the first time I've, you've heard this. Yeah. It became that obvious. Yeah. <laughs> it became obvious that writing is an essential skill, and it's something that I've just recently also, in the last uh, year and a half, you've seen my, my essays. Those are my attempts at getting much better at the written word. What has really been good. your impression of it? They're of them? really good. Yeah. Dude, I, I love reading your writing. Do you? It just, it's, it just cuts right through. It gets right in the heart right away. It's like, I, it's like the way that you talk. Mm. And it's, oh, that it's, is just, my it's powerful. Thank Amazing. you. 
It's like, you have a skill. It's incredible. This is you, uh, there is no dad on the planet who needs to be writing this book more than you do. <laughs> Cause okay. you like it's the way that you put it, the ideas that you have and the practice that you've put into all this, this is, you need to do it. I'm going to be mad at you if you don't. I've been telling you since you 2010 to write a book. You, you have been telling me. You're you're one of three <laughs> people that have consistently, at least once a year, said, where's the book? <laughs> When's the book coming out? <laughs> or are you started the book? <laughs> um, <laughs> no pressure, but come on, man. <laughs> right. Thank you. Uh, that means a lot coming from you. Um, I know I have stories to tell. I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to write better, how to position it out. Sometimes like I have stories the whole like for example the uh, the story around upgrading i don't want to insult people i'm not trying to write or tell my stories in a way to paint myself off as a victim nor am i trying to paint anyone in my life off as terrible people um so that took me a while to package and figure out what angle to take to not insult anyone because i'm not that's just not who i am All right um so yeah. that learned that writing that go ahead sorry yeah, I was gonna say, TV. I don't know if you have it in you to be mean to somebody. Like that's not, you know, that's not going to be. I've never seen you say something ugly about anybody. Yeah, but I also try I to make sure it can be misinterpreted. I do. Right, I but do. I, you know, I appreciate that you had that concern. But I, you know, and that that's a an extra gracious way to go. But I, you're, <laughs> you're going to be fine with that. The the question that I had for you about your okay. writing, though, because you're also a very gifted illustrator and you know mm. just the the doodles that you you know yes. used to make as a kid and i know that, that i saw that some of those that practice of drawing came mm -hmm. back in and yes. then soon after you started writing as well yes so i'm wondering for you is your process like do you get the picture first especially when you've got like the young tv and old <laughs> tv you know you've got you know you'll always have something that's just like in a very small picture you've said something well yes. there's that phrase about a <laughs> picture's worth a thousand words but yes do you the picture first and does that help you to process what you're going to write yes and yes <laughs> um okay. it's, yep. it's sometimes it's the word sometimes it's the story and the main idea the point i want to make yeah. uh sometimes it's the picture like i have one yeah. i start and, and i have a picture in my head and I, i've been sketching this for a couple of years now uh it, the story the picture and i'll, I'll share it right now is of me i'm trying to figure out what point of view but it's me on the floor on my knees uh bawling it was the moment i'm looking down and, and literally seeing the pieces of my life mm. all around me shattered like glass so i have that picture because i i remember that moment in my life when i was married where i realized there's no fixing this this is yeah. over and I'm looking and I'm bawling trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I was like 2005. Yeah. That, I have that picture. I don't have the words for it yet, but the picture is there first. Yeah. Um, anyways, I, I sketched it That's, again. Yesterday. It'll be a good one. Yeah, it's going to be a powerful one. Yeah. Because we all have that moment, right? I will. Where it's like, oh crap. Yeah, what am I going to do? And you'll have such, you know, I mean, you've done so much, mm -hmm. had so much healing along the way as well, but it's just one more, one more pass mm -hmm. at the healing. And then when that's out there, when you release this picture and this story out there, just know that that's going to make a ripple effect of so many others who are like, oh, yeah, he said it just right. And thank you. Um, it comes both ways. And I feel like it's, it's my duty almost. Uh, if for no one else, then it's it's therapy that final moment to release that. Hopefully, someone sees yeah. it. Like I actually had a friend that that told me he didn't think he was getting divorced and he he didn't know how he was going to survive and this or that. And he reached out to me. And then six months later, <laughs> he says, "Oh my God, you're right. That was the best decision I could ever <laughs> made. Thank you." I'm like, "Yeah, you're going to survive. It just seems like you're not at the moment in that moment." So right. hopefully, people see that, read that. And they're able to process because they look at me now and I'm not like oh, uber successful, but I am successful in, in many ways. And I, I, I own that. I, I, oh, I yeah. take ownership of that. 
And they think I have it all figured out or always had it figured out, which is quite the opposite. No way. (laughs) Um, Definitely not. (laughs) Right? Um, Yeah, picture usually first as I am. And you know this, I'm a very visual person. I've done many things visual. Like we've worked on some projects together where I was the design guy, I was the picture guy, the graphic design guy or whatever. Yeah. I was always that, that guy. You did my first book cover. Did I really? <laughs> was that me? Oh my God, I'm learning so much today. This is so neat. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Uh, writing, I didn't realize this, like this is why you come to mind a lot more than you realize. Hmm. As I was learning about more about writing, I've always wanted to be a writer. And I'm just now, and I thought about this before I got on the call, like I can say to you without reservation, I am a writer. Yes, you are. Right. Um, but writing something I've always done to some extent, I, I started blogging. That was my first attempt at trying to make money online in 2006 or seven. Um, so I started getting some reps in there. I left it alone for a while, done the marketing thing, but obviously there's writing in that. And I guess that's the big point I wanted to make. There's writing in everything. Yeah. Even when I do my YouTube videos, yeah. I've learned that it's best if I have some outline and some script. And sometimes I write a good chunk of it in my head. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not on paper, but I, I write the essence, the, the skeleton and major points I want to make, stories I want to tell. I write it. That's great. And... So my process now, you asked about my process, is sketch, um, essay, or, or may, they might be flipped essay, sketch, podcast, mm-hmm. or YouTube video. Nice. Where I, I go a little more, yeah, because I'm trying to, <clears throat> I follow a, a school of thought, a group of writers on, in, on Twitter <clears throat> that they promote what they call atomic essays. We promote mm-hmm. atomic essays. So try to keep it between 250 words and 300 words. And the idea is to get to the point. Yeah. That's a lot right? of very few words. Say your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Say your thing. And then, depending on how that goes, then I go and, and, and do the podcast or do a video. Um, but it's all based on that that story, that uh, just ex- extrapolating from that and making it uh, a long form piece oh. of content. Because a lot of words are dropped in the writing of that. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the floor is littered it's, with them. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I cut, that was a great joke. I wanted to include that joke. Yep. It doesn't add to the story. <laughs> were you always a writer, or did you just pick it up in that moment when yeah, when you were asked crazy. to? I remember to in it. sixth grade, fifth grade. You know, like fifth grade, they would come. The teacher, would, okay, kids, we're doing creative writing today, and every kid is like, oh, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> so. Oh, that was okay. So that spoke to you, okay. And just all along, I, I mean, I was an avid reader. I know your girls read a lot too, mm-hmm. so that's that's huge. Mm-hmm. Just partially how I can write. Like I can't, and I used to actually teach people how to build a writing business, but I always said, I can't teach you. Mm, how I remember to, that. I can't teach you how to write. Right. I can't, you gotta have right. that. I can't, I don't know how it's magic, <laughs> Like, but I can teach you how to get some clients and get paid. <laughs> so, mm. And it's the same. Like I still have people who are like, Oh, can you, I'm like, I, I don't know how to tell you how to do it. It's just, it's like, how do you breathe? I, you know, I've just always been doing it. So, um, <laughs> You know, good for it, you. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing, but you have the same. I mean, you know, there's some talents that you have, like drawing. Like now, you know the skill, and you yeah. can evaluate and go, okay, maybe you know, do this, do that. But you know, when it's part of you, it just comes out. And if, so, there's a dark side to that. It sounds wonderful, right? Like, oh, to be an, a pretty freaking good artist, you know, artist or writer or musician or whatever. Wow, you've got all this. That's fantastic. You can make a living. The problem is when it when it's so natural to us, it's very hard to value it because you're like, mm. anybody could do that. Hundred percent. It's easy, right? Yes. Just right I actually way. struggle with that still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the the idea that somebody would pay for it. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy to me. I, so when I first started TV, I'll tell you this. I haven't. I don't think I've ever told you this. The first articles that I ever wrote. <laughs> so this would have been. Yeah, right in 05. So before I hired the coach, but um, I'd found somebody somewhere that wanted articles written and I was doing 500 word articles about the mortgage industry. For mm, fun. $2 each. 
Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. And I was very happy about yeah. it because I was like, oh, money paying me to write. Oh, my gosh. And I remember telling my stepbrother about this at my brother's wedding. <laughs> it was very memorable. And I was like, Steve, oh, my gosh, I'm getting paid to write. He's like, wow, what are you writing? How much are you getting paid? And I told him and he was like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, That's not good. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's huh? do the math here. <laughs> like, yes. Right. It's just a simple math. <laughs> so, but I mean, I was so excited. I was getting paid for words. So, when we I, still have to, own, we have to do the work of owning our value. That's, a, that's crucial. Yeah, but you don't know until you know, right? Right. And when you start off, you're going to be undercharging because yes. until you figured that out that wait that's that's not gonna work that's not sustainable no i was uh i was doing a lot of graphic work when i first started because that was it was easy for me and luckily you can do graphic work online that's my first online yes. business uh, a lot of design work but i looked up and and i still was broke <laughs> I, my bank account was barely i'm working so sticking hard i I'm like I'm literally working from morning to evening, and how is this possible? <laughs> and I'm convinced that you have to have that bottom. Yes. That, and it's usually at the beginning because yeah. you don't know what your, your work is worth. Right. You don't know where to even ask the questions, like, right. what, what, what will people pay for this? Right. And, and where, where are you on that too. scale? It's scary, too. So I remember, like, yes. the first time I raised prices ever, I was like, they're all going to go away. I'm going to have no clients. They're going to say, right. yeah, you were good at, a, you know, at $2 an article. <laughs> I, I didn't try raising it with them. I just went somewhere else. But oh, still, yeah. the same fear, you know, happened. Like, oh, well, you were okay at this amount. But come on, not a penny more. That's ridiculous. You're a little full of yourself, aren't you? <laughs> you know, like, that was like, what happened? Well, that went How on. did that work out? And, <laughs> Wait, no. I have to charge. Did they continue, money. though? Yeah, exactly. It's like all, well, they did. They've, you know, I've never had a client go, forget it, I'm out, you know. Um, yeah. But it, it came down to me. It hit me in the head like a ton of bricks at one point. I actually do my clients a disservice by not charging enough mm. because they need this. And if I go out of business because I'm not charging enough, now who are they going to go to? Right. That guy? No, you know. Yeah. So it's like if you, you know, it, it, you do it, you know, we owe it to ourselves and to our clients and really to their customers because they couldn't find them if they didn't have writing on their page. You know, I mean, it's just, it's this wow. ripple effect of it hits. It yes, a lot absolutely. Of you got to make sure you're around. <laughs> yes. Staying in business. That's the secret to success. <laughs> just, Stay in business quit. long enough. Right. Don't, don't, get don't quit. I, I had a. I had a guy reach out to me once and he said, hey, are you still in business? I said, uh, yeah, why? Okay, great. I need you to put a proposal to me together for, because I had someone I was working with. Uh, they were supposed to submit it and I reached out to them and apparently now they're out of business and you're still in business. So therefore you must be doing something right. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. the secret to success. Hold on for dear life. Right. You know, get okay. better, charge more. Yes. Uh, and stick around and you will eventually, it will, it will come to you. That's kind yes. of my business model now. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, uh, I did want to share this story as it relates to my daughter and her photography. She, she's she been shooting since she was 12, 13, 14, right? And she loves it. Yeah. She picked it up almost Im immediately, understands ISO, aperture a lot better than I do, and I've been yeah. shooting longer, but I don't put the time in and she got it like she knows natural all this yeah and she started doing gigs she started getting uh, opportunities and she was charging very little but you know she was getting the reps in so i encouraged her recently she's like uh i'm having people come back and ask me for more work i think i should raise my prices i'm thinking 200 dollars. i said no at least five and we went back and forth and back and forth. And, uh, and uh, the big thing I told her, look, I, when you're young, you don't have a job, you don't have rent, you don't have a car bill, uh, they're going to get what they pay for and you're getting your reps in. You're not great yet. Right. So this is the reason I wanted you to do it early on so you can suck and not be very good. You're a kid yes. and people know that and they'll get decent photos. She yeah. wasn't going to suck, but she was not as good. 
Uh, so by the time you're 20, 21, 25, forget about it. You're charging $5,000, $10,000 per shoot. Yes. You're getting now those you're reps in at a young enough age to... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at 25. Um, but the big thing I try to tell her, and this is it applies to us, is like you had to go through that. Luckily, yes. you were young. Yes. Now, raise your prices. You have, uh, you have a responsibility. You have bills to pay. And I think you're undervaluing yourself. Mm-hmm. People are only going to pay you what you quote them. Like right. if you, everyone says, hey, I want people to pay me what I'm worth. I want people to pay me what I'm worth. Well, you need to price yourself accordingly. Because very few people are going to, if you ask for 100, very few people are going to say, no, I'm going to give you 500 instead. Mm-hmm. No, it's you. Right. You're the person that's pricing yourself in the marketplace. Yes. So, baby, please raise your prices. Good. She didn't do 500. I think she did three or four. That's but she's I- super excited because that was already, yes, exactly. That's already double or triple what she was charging before. Next time around, I said, somebody told me this. Who was it? Was it Billie Jean? Was it Hermosi? It was one of those guys. Said, uh, and it stuck, it stuck with me. Now, it had Kenny mm-hmm. Hermosi. He just came on the scene recently. Um, no, I forget who it was. Point was, with every single client, you should be looking to increase your prices. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the idea being, and, and I love this, is today is the cheapest you will ever find me. Mm. Would I be in six months or a year? We'll see. But today was likely the cheapest you will ever find me because I'm going to continue improving. I'm going to know more. I'm going to be more strategic and just know that my experience will be worth more and I'm going to price myself accordingly. Good. Oh, shit. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. So, That's good. That's solid advice. Like that can set her up for her whole career. And, and it will. It, you know? Yeah. And, and, and at which point she's, she's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, one way or the other, both of them are going to be fine. I'm so happy. Yes. Um, oh, that's so great awesome advice thank you thank you I wanted to ask you about your project oh yeah man. your big a whole new big thing right your big thing um, <laughs> I've been pronouncing it wrong this whole time that's okay I most thought, people do I thought it out. was Idlewood apparently Close. wait I, I thought it was Idlywood or something like that <laughs> most Please people do spell it or say it wrong okay. so it's Idlewild Woods oh. but Idle is like I had, there it is. I lived in Charlotte for a little while mm-hmm. um, as a young adult, and there were a bunch of streets that had Idlewild on them. And I thought, that's a beautiful word. What is that? And it just kind of lodged in my brain. Mm-hmm. But an idol is like, it's idyllic. It's like that uh, same word, idyllic. Gotcha. And so Idlewild, you know, and then woods. But I'm ahead of myself. Yes. <laughs> so, Bring us back. So one thing that I know you and I both discovered in all these years of becoming grizzled veterans working online at home. <laughs> very great, very great. Is uh, it's really easy to have entire days go by where all you did was look at the screen all day. Your eyeballs hurt. You forget that there's an outdoors, you know, you're hunched over, it's awful. You're disconnected, you feel isolated, alone, kind of spent. And I lived like that for a long, long time. You know, I was a single mom for a long time. I, you know, there was a lot of financial pressure. And I, my idea back then was outwork it. <laughs> yep. Crappy mindset, yeah. just work harder. <laughs> no, don't have enough money, just work harder. Work all day, every day. Not good for us. Um, about a right. year and a half ago, I read a book called Three Simple Steps by a guy named Trevor Blake. <sighs> Trevor Blake, has, uh, you know him, yeah. So he has run <laughs> several and sometimes concurrently, but nine-figure businesses. He's got so many things yeah. all the time. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. fine, all right. It was a signed reading at work. I was just like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept talking about oh spending, you know, working no more than five hours a day. And two or three of those hours, to be honest, he was out walking his dogs. And I'm like, must mm-hmm. be nice, Mr got all the money in the world, <laughs> you know, like, but some of us are working, you know, but I, Fancy you know, pants. That, yeah, I was like, mm. and I read it and read it and read it. I was like, all right. He's saying, just go outside, just go outside for a few minutes, unplugged, mm. just sit there. That's it. Just do that. I'm like, fine, I'll do it. Yeah. And I did. And I'm like, hmm, kind of like it. <laughs> and then I started gardening a little bit more. <laughs> And I'm like, because I'm out here, I might as nice well out here. Deadhead, yeah, I might as well deadhead some roses or grow a thing. I don't know. Wow. But I started really liking it. I'm like, this is really weird. And so this is I all. Started seeing those videos. Yeah, this is all going in my head. I'm like, this is interesting. And um, 
I was driving home. I had gone up to Tennessee to see my kids. I was driving home. Um, I had I had watched Frank Kern had a video. He's not the only one to do it, but he had a video about doing the perfect average day exercise. And um, so I like watched that video. I'm like driving home, and all of a sudden, basically downloaded into my brain <laughs> was this whole idea: Hey, build a retreat center for entrepreneurs. <laughs> and do it in the Smokies and host retreats, like quarterly retreats where they can come and connect and like, you know, like not pitching, you know, none of that crap, just like showing up and being real and going roasting marshmallows around mm -hmm. the campfire, like, and set it up so it's really nice so they want to come. And then in between these retreats, make it so that they could come back and rent the place mm. like either the whole place maybe they got a business that big or maybe they just want to come and write a book or they want to come and do their best thinking or you know meet up with other entrepreneur friends and i was like okay <laughs> what am i doing with this i've never done anything like this however if you remember 2010 you and i where did we go we went to an outdoor retreat for entrepreneurs that was in, oh and wow we didn't talk about that but yeah <laughs> I'm still friends yeah. with a lot of them, you know? That's where yes. I met, met Ryan Moran, We've actually. Bonded. He was, what, like 22? Right. Tiny little baby boy. Dude, and, uh, little genius. Yeah, Kid genius. You know, and it's like, those are lasting relationships that we have. So, mm -hmm. I bought property. <laughs> I actually, I didn't have the money, you know? So, I was like, ah. Oh. So, I got a couple of investors, and we bought the property. We bought 35 acres in the Smoky Mountains in Greenville, Tennessee. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's hilly, there's pastures, mm. there's a creek, it's quiet, you can see the stars. There's not all this road noise and it's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And so, and then I start about like, okay, now in order to build this thing, I need about $2 million to make it really nice. But in the meantime, <laughs> so I have a pitch deck, it's out there. I talk to accredited investors and, you know, we'll see. It will either happen quickly like that, or it's going to happen slowly while I just build it myself. And either way it's happening. Mm -hmm. So we put up our first bell tent because I was like, all right, in the meantime, what I want to do is geodesic domes. They're so cool. You have to look them up if you haven't seen them. Really cool looking. I will. And you can make them so geodesic luxurious. Like a dome, it looks like a like a snowball, half a snowball, like oh. a big kind of almost. But it's got like a. I think I have seen it. It's so gorgeous. Yes. It's really cool, and they're perfect. Like you can situate it whatever way, so it looks like you got the best view. It's quiet. It's like they're amazing. You can sleep four to six people. You put you know very comfy. Like I'm trying to aim it like it's the Ritz. You know, like I've seen some of these domes where people charge five, six, seven hundred dollars a night, and I want ours to be oh, that wow. nice. You know. So mm. I'm like, okay, that's definitely gonna take some funding. So, <laughs> but in the meantime, <laughs> I'm like, I really just wanna mm -hmm. start sharing this place. Like I, I want to have friends there. I want entrepreneurs to go there and have like a fantastic planning time and go, oh my gosh, I just got the idea for whatever their thing is. And so I'm- um, Oh, wow. Yeah, so we put in a bell tent <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> so, it's mm -hmm. not it's primitive but it's not like entirely primitive like you can get a shower we have a, a shower hut and you can heat up some water and go and you know there's a, a composting toilet that one of my dear friends contributed so i'm like oh this is amazing so you don't have to actually poop in the woods like a bear but you can you can i guess but, go but you can it, have bear. this like excellent time just in this in this bell tent and as it pays for itself we'll add another and another and mm -hmm. another and you know and just keep adding them on while we raise the money for Idlewild Woods the way that I want it to be. The other exciting part is we did get a grant for including a food forest, a community food forest. So some of this acreage is on a pasture and it's really fertile because you got this creek going you now. So this grant um. allowing us to, when it funds, you know, it could be a year, it could be two years, who knows, but um, to build like a permaculture, like so that people from the, so it's Appalachia, it's very poor. The whole Smokies is, you know, mm. lap, you know, it, right. but so there, there are a lot of hungry families and I, I just have a, like, I, like, I don't feel like that should be a thing. I feel like we should be able to fix that. So I'm gonna, <laughs> so, so we will have this, so um, yeah, we'll have this permaculture thing that's gonna produce a lot of food. 
you know, the community comes in with this grant, we give away 75% of what we grow. So I'm thrilled mm. and we'll teach people like, hey, here's, you know, you can grow on your yeah. own. And I, I just really want for people to have that power to create the food that they want, you know, organic, fresh, and that they have control over. So right. it's happening. Wow. It's just, it's not happening as fast as I want TV. Like, I'm like, why isn't this done already? <laughs> like, <laughs> I bet. It's never fast enough. It's never, never fast, fast enough. enough. <laughs> But Even it's when it's amazing. fast, it's still not fast enough. It's still not yeah, fast. Yeah, <laughs> I believe that to be true. Yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm beyond impressed and blown away by the vision. Thank you. You're right. We as entrepreneurs, we don't see much light. Uh, yeah. It's only recent. You know what's funny is that I didn't learn this till recently, and maybe they taught me this and I just forgot. But I didn't know how important the sun was for our oh. body, or for yeah. our eyes, even. For yes. to sleep better, you need to have sun uh, exposure to the sun. Yes. You need to have it's your circadian uh, exposure to the sun. It's all connected. Yeah. yeah. Vitamin D. I like had what? no idea. Yeah. the vi Like my doctor said, hey, you should just take more walks to get more vitamin D. I was like, yeah. what's that got to do with it? vitamin D? Why don't just drink more milk? She's like, no, no, no. Vitamin D will help you produce. I mean, the sun, sunshine, walking will help you um, yes. get more sunshine and you will produce vitamin D naturally. Really? Why the? So, anyways, and I have a, um, a as entrepreneurs, a home at home entrepreneurs, marketers. I hardly ever go out. I went years without hardly spending yeah. any time outside. Yeah, or with another human face to face. This and is COVID. Hello. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> but even before that, that's yeah. why COVID didn't screw with me too much right. because I was already I living that lifestyle. <laughs> Yeah, like, wait, what? Why is everybody... I don't know what the big deal is, bro. Um, but this is fantastic. So when you shared the idea with me, like, you were like, what do you think about this? Uh, what are your thoughts? I'm like, this is brilliant. Um, do it. I don't know how what this involves, but do it. If you can, make it work. And you have. You found uh, financial um, backing, some, right? Yeah. Um, which that story in and of itself, what was... I would like to ask you about that. What was the first big obstacle you had to overcome? Oh, man. I was just, I was terrified because I was like, I don't know. I've never done this. Now, granted, mm -hmm. I've built an advisory board of people who have done parts of it, which is yeah. fantastic. My husband used to be a general contractor, so that's fantastic. Ah. His parents used to own campgrounds, so I'm like, close, so Ooh. all right, that's that's helpful. So I was terrified that like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing how am I going to, like, if somebody invests, I'm terrified for them. Like, why would they Ooh. do that? <laughs> why would you give me your money? I don't want to lose it. Oh my gosh. What am I gonna yes. do? You know, and that, that was terrifying. And mm -hmm. because I was so scared of that, I had a really hard time even making my pitch deck. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I was like, ah, I'm closer and closer to actually ruining somebody's life. It was terrifying. No. So, oh, I was just like, uh -huh. oh my gosh. And then, it was very helpful because some more seasoned investors were like, dude, we know, we know everything, all your projections, they're made up. It hasn't happened yet. It's all looking at the best, <laughs> you know, and we know you're talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about it. it up. It's fine. That's what you do when you don't know. You have to pick something, you know. So we know and we know that we it's on us to do our due diligence. And to be honest, right. We're betting, it's like if it were horse betting, we're betting on the jockey, not the horse. Mm. So even mm. if this whole thing goes up in smoke, hopefully not literally, but, right. you know, yeah. we would be back it's like, hey, whatever else, we'll get you next time. Whatever else you're doing, we want in. You know, I was like, wow. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. That's deep. That's very deep. You clearly had the, you had the, the, uh, the trust of the investors. Yes. Yes, so you, that's gold. It's huge. <laughs> and so what I started with was I just started posting, you know, I've ultimately wrote what they call a vivid vision. So people can Google that. Mm -hmm. Cameron Harold Her wrote that. Vivid vision is a great book, but it's basically like imagining it. Okay. As if it's, it's like right now, present tense. What are you seeing? What are you feeling? Who are you mm -hmm. serving? How's the marketing? All this so I started writing all that out and people were like, ah, I see what you're doing. I see. Yes, yeah. I want part of that. Writing was good right there, huh? Yeah, that was a great time to have a you know writer <laughs> inside. But it, it was just an amazing mm -hmm. thing to see people go, 
I see what you're doing and I want to help. I, the best thing that I heard be for it. the best analogy for investors is this. Let's say you're driving in the car, car breaks down. We've had that car. We've both had that car. You pull it into the shoulder. Okay. So people are whoosh, 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 going right past you. And you're in there and you're like looking up on YouTube. How do I fix this? How do I, you know, texting somebody? I don't know what's going on, but you're in your car. Nobody's stopping. If you got out of your car and you were pushing your car, I guarantee people are going to stop, pull over and help you because you have traction. You're showing I need help and I'm doing this thing, whether somebody stops and helps me or not, I'm doing this because this is important. I have to move the car. So that's how investors look at it. Like if they see you're doing this thing one way or the other, that's huge. They can see that you're intent on, I am making this thing happen and I'm getting some traction, not as fast as if I had five people pushing with me, but it's happening. So I just kind of keep looking at that. Like I've, I've shown my pitch to sev several people who, you know, you never hear back and like, okay. <laughs> Sometimes I've heard, yeah. well, no, it's, you know, I'm, I'm into this or into that. So not so much a real estate type thing, but that's fine. I'm like, okay, that's totally good because I want only to have investors who totally people. get it, who can see it as well as I can see it and who want to be part of that. And, and they want to help push that car along. Yeah. Right. Let's push the car, you know? Like, <laughs> Just to continue there. that metaphor, because it's, the, yeah. yeah, they're the, the investors are going to help push that car along or maybe yeah. call the call the mechanic over and, and help repair it so <laughs> yeah, we can move it. Well, I'll the get them that damn too. thing. Sometimes they're going to have a guy, right? So, hey, oh, yeah. we're pushing this car. I got a guy. Let me call him. You know, it's like, yeah. it's not just the money. You, you want their right. advice. You want their resources. Their, hey, you know, I know this mm -hmm. guy who's on YouTube and he's, you know, got this huge channel. And if we invite him to come and camp or come stay at a dome, yes. it's mm. going to blow up, you know, yeah. like that type of thing. I think it's going to happen for you, especially yeah. given your marketing experience, your marketing connections, uh, your writing uh, the, it's, it, this is inevitable once the thing really starts to, I guess, gain traction. Wow. It's going to work and you may be the first of many. I yes. feel like you will be copycatted before long. Well, that's the thing. A I'm lot of us. people all the time. Like, oh my gosh, okay. I have that same idea. How are you doing this? I'm like, believe yeah. me, I'm taking notes as I go because I don't know some of this stuff. Like, there's a lot I don't know, but I'm figuring it out and I will share it. I will make a course it. eventually for people who want to start a retreat center because like, that's what I do. <laughs> you're, you're building the plane as you go along on the way yes. down. Um, exactly. And it's 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 beautiful to watch, and I can't wait for it to be open. Um, Thank you. My my girlfriend has family in Tennessee, oh, how so about that? it's going to make it even more tempting. Yes, more tempting to come see you. Uh, actually, we need to schedule that next year. Yes. I'll talk to her um, about coming to Tennessee and coming to see you. See this place. That would place. be amazing. Um, that would be amazing. I. I I'm, I'm, I feel cool to know you, to be oh. honest. Um, <laughs> every time your name pops up, like your name comes up from time to time with people or I see who you're working with. Like you mentioned Trevor, he was a yeah. client of mine for about yeah. a year, year and a half. And that, you know, I helped, was helping market him. I was doing YouTube and other stuff for him. Um, <sighs> but to hear you, you talk so, um, so highly of him, I'm like, oh my God, he's my client. Right. Um, <laughs> It's and knowing what he's doing in the world, he's, yeah, yeah. like we we haven't talked much, but we're still close enough to we yes. can see each other. Like I see you, yeah, I see you, girl. Totally. Do your thing. Totally. Um, ah, so thank you, thank you for thank that. You. Uh, I hope, and I will uh, more than happily share this when when it uh, when you get closer and closer to I guess making it more public or it, how is that going to work? Uh, yeah, public, so I can't. Uh, so SEC it... and all this kind of thing. So I can I can send it to individuals okay. who ask to see it. I can't post it publicly okay. the pitch, but um, but yeah, they mm. can. So and we have a website that's getting built. I have a barter deal going with one of my clients. He's building an amazing website. Okay. So the ugly version I'm, is. I'm looking where, at it. Yes, the ugly version is there. EntrepreneurRetreatCenter.com. And uh, mm -hmm. over the next weeks or months, it will become beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Magically. <laughs> good, good, good. I love that. I love that. Yes. Um, I wanted to wrap up our interview by asking you, or having a conversation around something that we've talked about in the past, and mm -hmm. especially now that we're older parents. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, mm -hmm. 
one of the things I'm struggling with, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting better at it, is now that we're older and our kids are older, uh, I hardly see my kids. Oh, it's hard. And it, it's, it's hard. But we actually like each other. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so it's not, they're not... I'm not not see, I'm not seeing them because we don't have a good relationship. Right. It's because they're they're living, is he doing fulfilling their thing? lives. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and you said something to me that rocked me, but at the same time was oh. beautiful. Is that yeah. do you remember this conversation? Yeah, yeah. Because I think something about along it the well. lines. Yeah, something along the lines of they are they now get to choose yes. how much. They, how much access they give us, how much... Uh, They're how many, volunteers. How much, yeah, yeah that's we're all volunteers in the relationship at this point. And I was like, wow, that's absolutely true. And I kind of knew that intellectually for a while. But when you said that to me, I, I think I bawled a little more. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm in a good place. I'm happy with the job that I've done. I've given them the resources that I feel I w- or that I wish I had. Uh, give them tools, language, um, skill sets. So I'm very happy, yeah. um, but it's still tough. <laughs> I know. I just I still struggle with it. It's hard. It's hard. It's like, I mean, and that's a beautiful thing. You've set them up so that they can just go function. You know, they're not crashing on your sofa because they can't do anything else. Like it's, they are fully functioning people, which is a beautiful thing. But still, you miss like. Just miss them. Yeah. Just miss my kids. Sometimes I come across. You know. You come across old photos. Do you, do you have this come up on Facebook yeah. memories? And like, oh my god. Yes. Yes. What happened? And it's <laughs> so the beautiful thing. Is, the beautiful thing is, and you know, to be honest, like there have been times my kids have hated me. I, you know, it, it has not always been flowers and roses, and you know, uh, you know. Right. But what I know now is that those memories that I have, I might be the only person who has them because Mm. they were babies. You know, some of my memories are like holding my daughter, like rubbing my head, my chin on the top of her head, that soft hair, just singing together. And she's too little to remember that. Or my son, you know, wearing his, one of his many different costumes out, Buzz Lightyear or Spider-Man or whatever, and just be out out and about. And I remember like, I could just look at him and what a cute little boy. This is so sweet. So Mm -hmm. these are, our memories are from our perspective. We own them, right? which means we can visit them anytime, which is a beautiful thing. It's like, it's so vivid. And I kind of feel like it'll get really woo woo with this, but I kind of feel like I can picture my little kids and almost travel through time, you know, in a weird sort of woo-woo way and tell them things like, hey, you're going to be all right. You know, mom loves you. Yeah. Like anything that I wish I could have gone back and fixed, I can go and, and tell them this way. I don't know mm-hmm. if they'll ever get it, but I can have like a relationship with them in a whole different sphere of existence. Like they live in my memories in a very right. powerful way. Wow, that's beautiful. I can visit that anytime. It doesn't matter if they're here or not here, if I'm busy, you know, if I'm flying on a plane, whatever. Those are always accessible. And it's uh, it's a beautiful thing to be able to kind of have those and treasure them, you know? I do. I'm, uh, I'm grateful for the time I've had with them. Yeah. Uh, the stories that I share and the videos that I do where I talk about the stories or everything that I do around them. As I get older, I'm afraid I'm going to forget more and more. Yes. So hopefully the internet doesn't go to shit and right. burn down and it's still there so I can revisit it. Yeah, I saw that. Um, you were right now that. Yeah. I mean, you look back at your, your father, your grandfather, your great grandfather, like great grandfather, you probably know nothing about no experience of him. No, what did no. he think about this or that? What were her fe- his feelings? What did he feel like the day he got married? When he had kids? When he had great grandkids? Uh, you know, no way to know. None of that. None of that exists. I, I, I feel I like know what them, you're I, doing, know my, I barely know my dad. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So by you writing, by drawing, by creating all this, curating these moments from your life, they're for your kids and for your grandkids and for your great grandkids and great, great, who you probably will never meet. But they'll meet you. They'll know you. 
you know? That's something that I, I, I'm depending on. <laughs> yeah. I had this, this thought, or I came across this idea a while back, and it like, stuck with me ever since. So kind of to your point about um, having, being able to talk to them, um, I had this, this quote, or whatever the heck it was, said something like, the, the way, the, the, the dialogue that we have in our heads, in our minds, are the voices of our parents. Mm. Because they were the first programmers, the first people whispering words and, and whatnot. And I hope that the voice they hear in their head is a good one. Oh. Is one that, yeah. that, that's always been encouraging them. Yeah. You've done that, man. I've always looked up to you as a dad. Not my dad, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that made me laugh. <laughs> I always have looked up to you, just like the way that you have shown up. It has helped me. Mm. And I hope it'll help me also. You know, it was a little late for me because my kids were older, but someday I'm going to have grandkids. Yeah. I'm going to break out the TV playbook because. <laughs> You better get that book done. <laughs> I, I will. I will. Like it's. It's. Uh. I want. I need to have it before the girls go and have kids. Yeah. Ah. That's a whole another. I mess. know. Right. We won't but even think about that yet. Let's but. not think about that. Susan, I love you. You've been a great friend for so many years. I appreciate your time. We've gone a little long, um, but I had a hunch we'd go a little long. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> not at all. A TV, I um, love hanging out with you. You are. Thank you. You're one of my heroes. One of my oh. very favorite humans on the planet. So. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you are too. If I haven't verbalized that, you rock. You've been. I've been watching you. You've been watching me. We've been um, watching each other's trajectory, and, and uh, I'm impressed and beyond honored to be your friend. Uh, so, thank you for your time. Is I guess the big point I was trying to get to. Thank you for your time, for your stories, and. Uh, Give me some insight. Um, you definitely gave me some th things to think about. Thank you. You're very welcome, TV. Thank you for having me. Come on out and absolutely let's do a run around in the woods and roast some marshmallows and stuff. I get. Wait. We, we'll talk. We'll talk offline and, and continue this conversation. But yes. So with that having been said, thank you for tuning in to the TV show podcast. My name is TV. This is Susan. Feel free to look her up at. Oh, well, I'm sorry. What would the website be? Will it still be entrepreneurretreatcenter.com? Entrepreneurretreatcenter.com. I'll make sure to include links to all her stuff, whatever she wants me to include, because this is going to be fantastic, and, and uh, I can't wait to share more about it. So make sure to start following her now. She has a great newsletter where she tells fantastic stories on the progress of the, the entire center. So uh, make sure to sign up for that. Until next time. Bye-bye.